Greetings, traveler. I am Sir Nox, the teller of tales. Would you like to hear one? Before we get started, perhaps consider subscribing to the channel. We're still growing and it helps immensely, so thank you. This one is called, When a Good Man Goes to War. After finding RPG horror stories, I decided to share mine. Many moons ago, in 3rd edition D&D, I gamed with a group of casual friends, all adults in our 20s and 30s. We'd run this group for long enough to get a LOTR-style quest. We'd found a big bad evil item and needed to chuck it into a specific volcano to be rid of it. Then we had a new player join the game group, Chad. He started dating another party member, so they were a package deal. Chad's edgy rogue took an instant dislike to my character, Jimmy. As a longtime gamer, I finally acknowledged my need for RP and had made Jimmy cleric of Vulcan. Jimmy's RP shticks was when the party arrived at a village, he'd mend local farm implements for free if people listened to him preach about Vulcan. Jimmy was also a total support cleric. I only cast heal and buff spells. Finally, Jimmy was an unrelenting ray of sunshine even in the darkest moments of the game. Facing overpowered enemies and most of the party is single-digit HP, Jimmy would RP calling on Vulcan's mighty power to save everyone, as he cast heals and even tanked to save people. This all annoyed Chad to no end. I was never sure quite why. Fast forward to facing a homebrew type snake creature that popped out of a hole in the ground. It memorized most of the party except for two, Chad and Jimmy. Jimmy tanks it while Chad drags the party to safety. As my fellow gamers watch, helpless in character, Chad deliberately lets Jimmy die to the snake instead of helping him escape. Jimmy's body is even dragged into the hole and lost to the group. Other party members were upset. DM was upset. I was upset. Chad says, Well, it's not like we needed him. Cue entire party yelling, Jimmy was carrying the evil artifact. Yes, I'd been the only one they'd trusted not to be corrupted by its influence. Their Bilbo Baggins, whose intrinsic goodness had resisted temptation. Even I'd had to make a couple of saves. Why not moments? One party member had a luck blade, which in 3.5 could cast Wish. The DM, no fool, had only put one wish spell in the blade. The party member uses it and says, I wish Jimmy were alive again and back here with us along with the artifact. DM pulls me into another room. He sits me down and says, Look, I'm upset, you're upset, and Chad needs a lesson. Can I twist this wish spell? What you got in mind? Jimmy comes back to life, but has been corrupted by the artifact, and now it's servant. He's gonna take on the party. <laughs> oh yes, I was down. What follows is me being restored to life. Party has no idea I'm evil. We continue on and bed down for the night. Jimmy takes last watch. Chad is confused by Jimmy's total lack of anger. Come 4am, Jimmy wakes up with all his spells available and enacts his master plan. Heading slightly away from the party to a nearby rock ridge, he summons a pack of fiendish wolves, then he casts silence on an arrow and fires it into the party's sleeping area. Note to 5th edition only players. Yes, silence could be cast on objects. With the party unable to hear them coming, a spell casting mostly cut off, Jimmy and the wolves closed in. Just before reaching the area of silence, Jimmy cast Entangle on the party as they slept. Most of them were unable to break free, but hey, the plants wrapping them up woke most of the party. I wish I could say it was a TPK. Sadly, I suffered from the worst dice rolls of my life during that combat, and the party rolled some of the most consistent high rolls. The wolves put several party members out of action before dying. Jimmy managed to do a fair amount of damage with spells like inflict moderate wounds. Realizing I wasn't quite going to be able to win, Jimmy used bestow curse and blindness on the last party members standing, fighter and a ranger as I recall, and fled into the night with the evil artifact. The party was not able to chase him because guess who they'd all been relying on for all healing? Yep. The DM ruled that he escaped into the wilderness and the quest failed. Several apologized for Chad. A couple were shocked that Jimmy had been capable of dealing that kind of damage all by himself. The D&D group never held another game session. And that is how I first got to play an evil PC in D&D. <laughs> well, that concludes that tale. That was quite the, uh, that was quite the twist, honestly. I, I can't say that, uh, honestly, that's quite amazing, really. <laughs> I really... Wow. 
Boy, that Chad sure had it coming, didn't he? He ruined the game for everyone. What an absolute D-bag. Why was he like that, do you think? Maybe he was jealous. Maybe he thought that you were just, I don't know, impressed. You were wooing his partner. Who knows? Oh, but I do love that twist. Quite amazing. And at least they, hopefully Chad learned a lesson. I have another tale if you'd like to hear it. This one is called, You guys weren't being heroic enough, so I killed you all. This is a bit of an old story, so I don't remember the details perfectly. We were a small group of ragtag adventurers. We had a wood elf sorcerer banished from her village for lighting the forest on fire, played by me. A stoic dragonborn warrior seeking to avenge his family, played by my cousin. And a mischievous rogue, played by the DM's brother. The king calls us in because level 1 adventurers are definitely important enough to attract a king's attention, and are instructed to grab a treasure from an abandoned keep a few days' journey from the capital. Sure, nothing too big of a deal about this. We go over to the keep, have a couple minor combats against the goblins living there, and grab some loot. We never find the treasure the king asked us to retrieve, but we weren't too worried about it. We get to the dungeon in the basement and find a random old lady there. She was clearly out of it since she was practically offering to bake us cookies despite being locked in a dungeon, and we were all pretty weirded out. Personally, I was like 70% sure she was a shapeshifter or something since that's the kind of thing this DM would do to us. In the end, we decided to take the old lady with us back to the capital, when about a hundred goblins appear out of nowhere and rush us. The DM actually said, like a hundred. Considering how much trouble five of them gave us, we run for our lives, leaving the crazy old lady behind. When we get back to the capital, the king wants to see us. We explain that we didn't get his treasure, but apparently he's not mad about that. He's mad because that random old lady was his mother, and he orders his guards to execute us. Each of the guards are like fifth level, and we get pummeled and hanged. We ask the DM why he put us in that situation, to which he responds, you guys weren't being heroic enough, so I killed you all. Real heroes would have saved that old lady regardless of the risk to themselves. Never mind the fact that the king clearly knew his mother was there ahead of time, considering that he knew she died before we got back, and decided to send three random dudes rather than his fifth level guards in full plate. Never mind the fact that we were never sent on any kind of rescue mission, only one of us was even a good alignment, and the DM gave no expectation of heroic action in session zero. Never mind that the old lady was suspicious as all can be, and that the DM deliberately dropped an impossible combat on our heads to force us to run away. Never mind that this DM as a player always plays chaotic evil pranksters that mess with and steal from other party members. But nope, none of that matters, because the protagonists of his game didn't abandon their own lives on a chance to save a random old lady we don't deserve to live. P.S. I don't play with him anymore. There was a case where I was running a campaign without him, deliberately I might add, and he went out of his way to find out when and where it was and showed up during the session and just demanded to play. Fortunately, I've moved since then, so I haven't had to interact with him since, but I am the forever DM now, which is both a blessing and a curse. Well, that concludes that tale. That's quite a poopy DM if you ask me. I can't believe you would set them up like that and then only execute them because they didn't do what you wanted. Talk about not telling people about your expectations and holding them accountable for something they are completely unaware of. Oh, I don't blame you for not playing with them ever again. I wouldn't either. Well, I have one more tale for you if you would like to hear it. This one is called Youth in Asia XP. I've got a somewhat light-hearted one for you guys. Thankfully, this is about the worst behavior to come out of the particular group, and the player in question never made himself more than a very mild annoyance in the time we played together. Back in the days of playing 2nd edition D&D, back in high school, we had a regularly player we will call Chucky. Old Chucky may have focused a little too much on winning. The kind of guy that got really bummed and a little whiny when he'd take damage or just got attacked a lot in general. We even caught him dice swapping to fudge his attack rolls so he almost always hit. Never toxic to other players, just too concerned with winning. With the background out of the way, here's the shenanigans. We started a little pickup game where the DM had us looking for a lost temple in the desert. He had a paladin, fighter, barbarian kit, my ranger, and Chucky's always standard dual-wielding half-elf fighter template that he always made the same way every game. The party procured some camels, made our way into the sands. Along the way, we're ambushed by a bullet, sand shark thingy. We managed to kill it, but one of our camels is horribly wounded. We have no healing. It's not making the trip back. Chucky offers to euthanize the poor creature. 
Once the deed is done, he starts to write on his sheet. DM responds. What are you doing, Chucky? Chucky says, uh, XP. Y you already got the bull, the, the bullet XP. This is for the camel. Uh, what? Monster Manual says one HD animals are 15 XP, so... Then we all cracked up laughing. I fell out of my chair. The dude was dead serious and got a little mad when the DM told him no XP for mercy killing your own animals. He even was trying to get the jump on us to do it first so we couldn't get the XP ourselves. Like, we all should have been thinking the same thing. We teased him about it occasionally throughout the rest of high school. Hey Chucky, kill any camels today? Wow, that... <laughs> Oh man, if that was the case, I'd be looking for all sorts of birds and who knows, crickets, things of that sort, just trying to just grind XP for days. I'd be chopping down trees for XP, who knows, I would be doing all sorts of things. I'd probably start a little Stardew Valley little side quest just to be able to rank up a lot quicker than everyone else. You know, start a little farm myself and slaughter pigs and cows and all sorts of things. Well, that concludes our tales for today. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing and liking the video. If you'd like to hear more, come back and I shall tell you some. If you'd like to hear more right now, perhaps watch another video. There's a few off to the side.